Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Sir Edward. Um, may, may I start by congratulating my honourable friend, the member for Whitney, for securing this debate. And I will not try the patience of the House by repeating many of the comments he's made today. I, uh, I would like to say, though, that my constituency, which uh, is mid Worcestershire, um, also lies on the, uh, the North Cotswold route. It's, uh, it's vital to the local economy, and I therefore share all of the uh, concerns and comments that my honourable friend has uh, made, and in particular the appeal to the government for assistance with further upgrade. I also would like to um, express my appreciation for the tone he's adopted today, because it's quite important that we are partners with GWR. We want to support GWR, we want to work with them, um, but I think by their own admission their service recently has been disappointing, and I will share that um, shortly. Um, now, I'm incredibly uh, fortunate to represent in Mid Worcestershire, which covers the main Witchhaven areas, um, one of the most desirable places to live in the country. I'm originally a Lincolnshire boy, so, Edward, so I know you may disagree with me there. And of course, um, Whitney is quite a nice place to drive for on the way to Worcestershire as well. So, um, but, but it is a, an incredibly uh, nice place to live, work, and play. And um, the Cotswold countryside. <laughs> oh, indeed. Um, it's a fantastic place to, to live, work and, uh, and, and play. Um, employment is, is, is plentiful and uh, we've got thriving, uh, a thriving creative sector. Um, we have tourists coming from all over the world to come and visit us. But where we're relatively let down is in transport and infrastructure. We have the M5 running through us, but in particular trains. And I think this is highlighted by the fact that if we look at, say, Coventry um, or Leicester, both similar distance from London uh, to um, Evesham, for example, near where I live, um, you can travel by train there in 60 minutes. You can travel to, uh, to London in 60 minutes. You can travel to um, Warwick Park, where in about 80 minutes. It takes two hours to get to London. Um, by train from my constituency. So this slow service obviously is a source of frustration, particularly when it comes to encouraging more tourism. Now Worcestershire and Oxfordshire are two shire counties, two of the fastest growing shire counties, and therefore this focus on infrastructure is pivotal to the long-term economic growth of our regions. Um, and therefore we are obviously keen to work with the government um, to encourage that economic vibrancy and economic activity. Tourism is something I do talk about quite a lot. In the southern part of my constituency, I'm also very pleased to say that Broadway is about to have, for the first time in 58 years, a new train service. And thank you to the efforts of the Gloucestershire and Warwickshire Steam Railway Line, there will be opening a new service between Broadway and Cheltenham this coming weekend. So that's obviously going to be fantastic. Um, now, in joining calls for further upgrades to the Cotswold line and the redoubling of the line, which my honourable friend has argued for very eloquently, I do not wish to minimise the efforts and the progress that has been made so far. Similarly, in my constituency, we've seen significant increases in passenger numbers at all the train stations along the line, and therefore the demand or the, uh, the desire to travel by train is clearly there. And I'd like to also express my appreciation for the efforts of various bodies and groups, including the Cotswold Line Promotion Group, the North Cotswold Line Task Force and Vale Public Transport Group, as well as many Worcestershire MPs and the local council, for continuing to lobby with and work with GWR for these improvements in services. And we've already seen some significant improvements. There's already been some redoubling um, at the line beyond Oxford, and we've seen some expansion to car park capacity. And also very pleased that in the not too distant future we will see the new Worcestershire Parkway station open in my constituency. And once completed, this station will significantly enhance Worcestershire's connectivity to regional and national destinations, including London. Now, as befitting a modern train station, it will also be fully accessible with disabled spaces, secure bicycle parking and charging points for electric vehicles. There will be about 500 parking spaces in total, and that alone then does much to set Worcestershire Parkway apart from the other stations serving the region. Now, the Minister will be very familiar with the ask that myself and my honourable friend are making to him today, as unfortunately we are merely reiterating some appeals that have been made many times over the years to the Government. And whilst I appreciate that redoubling the Cotswold Line would be a lengthy project that would require a considerable amount of taxpayers' hard-earned money, it would be difficult to overstate just how positive the impact could be on the region. Redoubling the line was one of the first issues that I raised in this House shortly after being elected in 2015, and my honourable friend's predecessor as the MP for Whitney, the then Prime Minister David Cameron, told the House in response to a question, a Prime Minister's question, that he agreed that further investment in the redoubling of this line was necessary to deliver extra and more reliable services that our constituents deserve right along the line. 
One of the most common sources of frustration for rail users along the Cotswold Line is the lack of parking. Honeybourne Station in my constituency and Pershaw Station, which is just across the border in my honourable friend, the member for West Worcestershire's constituency, parking is a particularly acute issue to an increasing and ever-growing population. Honeybourne Station, which is in the very south of my constituency, right on the border with Gloucestershire, is located just that little bit too far away to get the immediate benefit from the expansion at the new Worcestershire Parkway Station. And plans for an extra 200 spaces at Pershaw Station were first unveiled several years ago, but progress is being hindered by ongoing disputes between Network Rail and Great Western Railway about who should provide the funds necessary to construct a bridge that would connect the station to the desired new car park. Now, my honourable friend and neighbour, the member for West Worcestershire, has been working tirelessly to move the process along and has been trying to facilitate dialogue between Network Rail, GWR and the Department of Transport and Witchhaven District Council, which owns the land the new car park would be built on. And the responsibility for solving this issue does not fall on any one single organisation, and I would welcome any suggestions from the Minister on how we can look to the Government for ideas for funding sources and therefore move this along. I'd also welcome the Minister's view on what more the Government can do to hold franchises to account when the services they provide to British taxpayers fall short. The past few months, as my Honourable Member has mentioned, have seen significant deterioration in the service by GWR along the North Cotswold Line, and I'm sad to say that my mailbag has been full of complaints from constituents about the service received from GWR, including my predecessor, Sir Peter Love, who I have to say does not bother me that often, so we know that this is a major issue. Now, GWR's own performance uh, report identifies that on London to the, Cots the London to Cotswold line during the recent um, period 12, there's been a particularly poor performance. And the 11.22 and 2.21 p.m. trains from Paddington to, to Worcester Forgate Street feature on GWR's list of the top 10 worst performing trains. On Monday, the 12th of February this year, what some local groups have dubbed a black day on the Cotswold line, Six trains were cancelled completely and six trains were either terminated or started at Worcester Shrub Hill instead of operating through Worcester Forgate Street, the Muldens or Hereford. Two days later, another six services between Worcester and London were cancelled and two commuter services between London and Worcester didn't operate for a week due to the lack of available drivers. And while GWR has acknowledged publicly and in communications with me that the service it has been providing has fallen short, we're not really seeing this issue being addressed fast enough. The Vale Public Transport Group has claimed that there is growing evidence that businesses and leisure travellers are deserting the Cotswold Line to travel on the more reliable and regular routes from Birmingham or Warwick Parkway. And while a number of constituents have told me that they have had to abandon the train altogether and now drive into work because they can't risk relying on the Cotswold Line to service their needs. Now, the current GWR franchise has already been extended by a year to run until April 2020. I believe this is not the first time that's happened. And the government is currently analysing the feedback to its consultation on the future of the Great Western franchise, and I look forward to reading those findings too. And the consultation sought views, amongst other things, on splitting the franchise. And I think that creating a standalone franchise for the North Cotswold line does merit serious consideration by the government. And I know that this is something also that my honourable friend, the member for West Worcestershire, has been particularly vocal about. I'm not alone in hoping that any future refranchising agreement will include an explicit case for redoubling the whole of the North Cotswold line. And I hope that today we can secure the Minister's support for that very goal.